So before we dive into all the math, let's just try to get a little intuition into what we mean by sampling and kind of good ways to sample and bad ways to sample. What we do here is going to be very kind of cartoon-like. We're just trying to get a, a feel for things, but hopefully these kind of cartoon examples demonstrate some of the issues we'll have with sampling. So given some continuous time signal, maybe it looks like this. So this is a function of time, and this is the signal that we want to sample. This is just some sinusoid, and let's just say it's a, a sinusoid of frequency f1. So it's just oscillating along. Let's say that we want to sample this signal. And when we say sample, that means at regularly spaced intervals in time, we want to write down the value of the signal. Well, there are kind of good ways to do this and bad ways to do this, and we're going to kind of cycle through a couple of examples here to demonstrate that. So case one, I say we're going to sample, quote, very slowly. So I put that in quotes because very slowly is not rigorous by any means. It's just an example we're going to do right now. We're going to make things more rigorous with math in a little bit. But for this first example, we're going to call this just very slowly. And what that means is I'm going to sample in time at very large intervals. So down here at the bottom, you can see how I have sampled just three times over the period of this sinusoid. So here I've sampled, and here I've sampled, and here I've sampled. So at those three points in time, I'm going to grab a value of the signal. So when I grab a value of the signal at that point, I get these blue dots right here. And these are what we call the samples of the signal. So if I was just given these sample values and I plotted just these dots, what I would have is a discrete time signal that looks like this. It looks like this discrete time signal right here. Now, obviously, this is kind of a problem. These samples don't look anything like my original continuous time signal. And we said earlier that when we do sampling, we would like to retain all of the information about the original signal. But since I've sampled what I called, quote, very slowly, we have not done a good job at preserving all that information. We ended up with a discrete time signal that doesn't look like the original signal. The samples actually look like a DC signal, something that's just constant. If I were to give you just these blue dots and you were to sketch them as a discrete time signal, you would conclude, oh, you must have sampled some constant signal. And that's obviously wrong. And the reason it's wrong is because we sampled too slowly. So let's go to another case. Instead of sampling very slowly, this time we're only going to sample, quote, slowly. So we're going to sample a little bit faster, but still not fast enough to capture all the relevant information. So here's the continuous time signal that we're dealing with again. And this time I'm going to sample a little bit more frequently. So in case one, I only sampled three times over the length of the signal. Now I'm going to sample five times over the length of the signal. So I'm sampling a little bit more frequently. So these will be my sample values, these blue dots. So this is a little bit better. If I gave you just the blue dots and asked you what type of signal this is, you might be tempted to fill in the blue dots with something that looks like this dashed blue line. And this dashed blue line now looks at least kind of like our original signal. It looks kind of like a sinusoid, but it doesn't look like the original sinusoid. In fact, it looks kind of more like a sinusoid of a frequency that is even slower than our original sinusoid. Our original sinusoid, we said, had frequency f1. This sinusoid is oscillating even more slowly in time, so it must have a frequency that is less than the original frequency that we started with. So again, this case, case two, it's a little bit better than case one, but it's still bad in that the samples that we wrote down, if I was to give them to you, and you were trying to, trying to guess what the original signal looked like, you would do kind of a bad job in guessing what the original signal looked like. And then finally, case three, we're going to say, let's sample the original signal fast. And again, fast is in quotes because it's a very ambiguous term. We're going to make this more rigorous later. But... For this cartoon example, what that means is we're going to sample very frequently in time. The time increment between samples is very small, that's one way to say it, or the number of times that I sample per second is very large. So if I actually sample at all these times, I get these blue dots, and now we're kind of happy. If I was to give you just these blue dots and ask you what does the original signal look like, you would probably sketch that black line right there. 
the samples look like, and again, that's kind of an ambiguous term, it's not very um, well defined, but the samples look like the original signal. So in this case, by sampling fast enough, my samples, the numbers that I write down, actually contain enough information to reconstruct the original black solid line signal. So this raises some interesting questions. How do I avoid cases 1 and 2? Cases 1 and 2 were kind of, quote, bad. The sample values did not look like the original signal. So we'd like to avoid that. Case 3 was good. That was a good case. What does it mean to sample fast enough? So that's what we're going to investigate now more rigorously. How do we avoid case 1 and 2 and make sure that when we sample a signal, we end up in kind of a case 3 situation where we've sampled fast enough and captured all of the relevant information.